Okay, so welcome back to another episode of the uh, Two Z GE build. So I've taken a bit of a change in direction. I'm actually going to dry sump this engine. I've been wanting to dry sump it for a long time, but couldn't justify the costs of importing a kit from Peterson or Bow, which were the only options I thought. I've now found that Pace actually make a kit for this, so I've got the Pace kit in the boot of my car. Um, but first thing I just do take time and chain off again, and take the internal oil pump off. Um, then I need to look at how I can plug the dipstick tube hole, so I'm going to try and tap that and plug that, um, and then spin it over and we'll look at fitting the dry sump. So to start with, I'll uh, get on with taking the dry time chain off. <coughs> okay, so that's the time chain off. I'm actually going to replace the small sprocket while I'm in there. I did buy a new one when I was rebuilding this and completely forgot to put it on, so I'll get that one out. in my passenger seat which is no longer in the car um, I mean realistically there's very very minimal wear on it you can see slight rounding on the teeth but nothing major but I'm going to use a new one as I've got it keep that there I'm go to scrap. <coughs> and then the next thing is take the water the um, oil pump off um, and I'll probably look to sell that as soon as I prove that the dry sump works that's got the MWR titanium um, gears in so that's a pretty damn good pump it's barely been used so that will be for sale soon um, but I'll remove that now um, and then we can get cracking with actually putting the dry sump on okay so that's the oil pump now off um, I'm going to spin the engine over so we can get to the bottom of it so we can start looking at putting the dry sump on um, something to bear in mind when you do that be careful when you're spinning over or you'll smash this sensor clean off So as you can see, I already put some of the bits on scavenge plate, pickup, um, scavenge plate, the baffle windage plate, and the pickup. Um, so I'm just going to take those off because we're not going to need those. Okay, then clear. Remove the gasket from there so we can get tied up and everything. <coughs> and now we're in a place where we can actually start looking at fitting that dry sump. What I'm going to do first is remove all the studs. The dry sump's come with a nice bolt kit, so I'm going to take these studs out. Um, use the bulk kit in theory the dry sump won't be coming off as much as the original sump was so um, yeah I'll wind those out now that's all the studs removed from the engine everything ready to go um, this is the dry sump oil pan itself so this is paste products um, cast and then machined oil pan um, a quick test I'll make sure I have is the right pan before we put the sealant on etc obviously um, everything lines up nicely so next step is to apply a, a line of sealant and um, and then put the sump on. sealant bead is in place now um, I clean both surfaces with brake cleaner prior to applying the sealant to make sure it does bond properly um, and now I'm going to put the sump in place. And I've got all the bolts ready down here with thread locker on them. So I'll put a couple in at opposing corners to make sure everything's lined up first. Now unfortunately when actually trying to get the sump to fit, my test fit seemed fine but I didn't check very well because when you try and bolt it down, the sump hits the ARP main studs. You can see quite clearly that the sump has not been machined to fit with these studs in place. So um, 
there's definitely now some work to do to this sump to remove material but there isn't much thickness there in that flange and I'll be very nervous of removing too much and then having an issue with the, um, the strength of the sump and I don't really know how to clear those studs. Um, back to the drawing board a little bit. So while I think about what I'm going to do with the sump, I'm going to turn it back over and get the timing chain back on and the timing chain cover um, and have a bit of a think about whether I want to dare drill the sump myself so that I send it off for someone to mill it or um, send it back to Pace really. Um, anyway, so let's go with the timing chain. So new timing chain gear, a bit of assembly load will make it easier to get on. This can be tight. It can be very tight, but a nice way to do it, slide a socket over the top if you've got one big enough and give it a tap with a hammer or if you're really lazy. If your socket's dry. Shit. Anyway, that's in place. So now I'll put on the fixed timing chain guide. Okay, our timing chain. So we've got our dim pull down the bottom for the yellow mark. Run it through the guide, up and over, orange mark, should be by the slot, that's orange mark, yellow still in place, and then this never lines up by itself, you always need to give it a little bit of a tweak. 14, sorry, yeah, 14 no spanner. I'll just turn it so that lines up with the timing mark. Make sure it doesn't slip back. <clears throat> and then we put on our moving timing guide. This is the one that's held in place by the timing chain tensioner. When we install it, we just have to make sure this tab is um, in the slot that's designed for it. Then put on our crankshaft position sensor plate. It can be a bit tight to get on, just give it a wriggle. There we go. Okay, and that's then. Nicely in place, so now we can actually put the timing cover on. I'm going to remove this dowel so it never comes out. Um, and I don't want it to cause some sort of catastrophic damage. Um, so I'll just pull it out with a pair of pliers. And then we can go ahead with the timing cover, timing cover um, seal and the water pump seal. I'm just going to add a little bit of my sealant around this O-ring. Wipe off the excess that I'm logged on there while talking to you. And then that is ready to put on. Um, I'm not using additional sealant, it's got a brand new seal, so we should just be able to place that straight on.
and then bolt it up. Okay, so while I figure out what I'm going to do with the sump, um, I've put the timing cover on, I've put the belt tensioner, the idler pulley, the main pulley, and the water pump all in place. Um, you'll also see that I've replaced the washer on the uh, main crank bolt with the pulley for the dry sump. Um, and actually, I've mounted the mount for the dry sump. So that's in place. I'm now going to put the supercharger on, and bolt that down, put the alternator on and put the pump in place and make sure everything else clears so that I see just how many problems I have to overcome with this. Unfortunately, there are a few more issues with this pace kit. These bolts are too long, so they don't actually have the right um, ratio thread to shoulder. Look at the length of the, the shoulder on that, and it's actually longer than the pump, so they'll never go tight. That, and they also hit the block, so they go all the way through the pump, and then they bottom out on the block, so that's not very good. Uh, this belt is clearly not the right size of that pulley. It doesn't fit between the gates at all. Um, not sure whether the pulley's wrong or the belt's wrong, but in any case, it's not right. Um, I'm quite surprised by the quality of this, I have to say. I thought this was going to be a fairly good plug and play kit. Um, it's not, so I'm going to ring pace um, on Monday and see what the crack is with the sump not fitting when you've got any sort of aftermarket stud kit which i mean who's going to run one of these engines without an aftermarket stud kit that wants a dry sump it's very unlikely wrong bolts wrong wrong pulley and belt let's see what they've got to say so the test fit of the dry sump didn't go very well um when i got the dry sump the oil pan these were not present these cutouts and these are what allow you to clear the main studs so if you're using standard bolts these don't protrude the surface if you're using arp main studs they do protrude and so you actually need to mill out um, these channels at the end of your oil pan to clear them. I've done that with a Dremel um, to the best ability. Um, and that does now clear. So I'm now at the point where I can just clean all this up, um, reapply the sealant and put the oil pan on. My bead of sealant is now on. Now time to put the oil pan on. So I'm going to put that in place and then use this selection of bolts, they're sitting in brake cleaning lines, clean off the old thread locker. This selection of bolts, um, I have to hold that in and I'm going to nut lock those as they go on. <coughs> I'll just get a couple ready, take the weight of the sump. Unfortunately I can't have the engine completely upside down at this point, because um, the supercharger is in the way. Couple of bolts in to locate it. And then I'll go ahead and put all the rest of the bolts in. 